Well, they're probably not getting enough water. So, you know, it's like, you know, plants need water, but they got to drink it. You got to give them iced water in a, in, a, in a nice cup. So they were talking about the cloud. And right. And I generally don't talk technical when I'm just chilling here and doing things. But I said, you know, instead of the cloud, why don't we go back to the traditional old server rooms, put the computers in the building, give them a nice air conditioner, you know, go through and, and manually just plug everything in and, and run it all on on servers. You know, then we don't have to worry about the cloud. And I mean, at that point, you can make your own Internet, right? Are we filming now? I might lose a lot of credibility when it comes to networks and clouds then, but Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com, and today we're going to be talking about how to use device filters or, well, really any kind of filters when we're assigning things in Intune. All right, whatever, don't, don't worry about it. The point is, you know, servers can be fun because you get to play with the wires, and uh, I think that's something that's lost nowadays with all this cloud activity. Get Rubix, solving for the modern workplace. All right, so before we get started, I just kind of want to talk about what we typically think of when we think about assignments for things. So we have Intune over here, right? That's pretty much looks like Intune. And I have some policy and I have some apps. And what are we assigning them to? We're assigning those to groups in Entra ID, formerly Azure AD. And, you know, we've always been very big on our groups, especially the dynamic ones. So things like, you know, having so having like groups that capture a certain autopilot group tag. That's how I would organize like my corporate devices. And then maybe I have a uh, another kind of device group for kiosks or whatever the case is. Maybe I even have some groups that are, you know, grouped together by the, the, the manufacturer or the model number because whatever they have specialized patches or stuff. Um, this is just how we do things, but there's essentially a problem here. And that problem is in the form of this barrier. So what is this besides a nice orange colored line that I put in the middle? Well, anytime you've ever complained about, you know, something taking a long time to assign to a group, or maybe you have an app that's deployed to a dynamic device group, but the device isn't in that group until finally you change an attribute and then it ends up in there, but you got to wait for Intune to see uh, that the group has actually changed members. This is because you're literally working with two different systems, right? We need time for the Entra object to properly evaluate and update itself. And then we need time for Intune to realize that happened. And honestly, there, there's this whole translation layer that can cause delays and slowdowns. So what's the answer for this? Because you'll probably notice that whenever you do all devices or all users with some kind of assignment in Intune, it's faster. It, it just is. But we can't do this for everything. We don't want to apply things to all devices or all users. So this is where filters come in. So one alternative, of course, would be to assign the policy or apps to all devices. Now, all devices is a built-in, uh, let's call it a, a natural Intune group, right? Intune knows all of its managed devices. Uh, so that's built in. You'll even see that separately in Intune uh, when you do groups or you can do all users or all devices. But we don't want things going to all devices. That's why we have the groups in the first place. So what we can do is put a filter on that assignment. Now, what can the filter look for? Well, the filter can look for all kinds of attributes, anything we want, really. So in this example, I'm going to add the filter to say if the device name starts with M365. And that's actually not a bad idea, because if we go back to the original model, my dynamic device group is looking for devices tagged with 365 because maybe their name from the autopilot profile will start with that. So I can even do this by the name of the profile itself and say for the filter, it's all devices. If the enrollment profile was, you know, this guy over here, right? So it's just another way to grab the same thing. Now, of course, my end result would be the policy is still only going to specific devices that match the criteria of the filter. So how do we make device filters in Intune? So we're going to go to devices and we're going to go down to filters. Seems a little too easy. So, I mean, there's all kinds of things we can do, but let's think about this for a second. Let's look at a situation like the kind I have, right? So I do have my device groups and uh, let me kind of show you what I typically do. I have a group called M365 devices, and this is a dynamic group that catches every device that has the M365 uh, group tag, right? And those devices all have the name. Well, actually here, let's see what they have. 
because now I don't remember. They all have a similar naming convention, right? Or at least they have an enrollment profile. So if we go to enrollment and we go to deployment profiles, we're going to go to default M365 Corp and properties. Okay, so they all get the Z0T for zero touch uh, acronym in the beginning. And that's going to that one group. So I have a few, uh, I have a few options I can do here. So if I go to filters, I'm gonna make one for my corporate devices. So I'm gonna call this corporate M365 devices. And you choose your platform. We're gonna do Windows. We can do this with all the platforms. So you can have many different properties. So my first one is gonna be the device name starts with, and we're gonna say Z0T dash, right? And that's gonna capture those. So you can click preview to see if it'll capture the devices you want. And I think we had something like, you know, uh, let's see here, 12, that's about right. So this is grabbing everything with that. But here's the question, if they have that name, does that mean they also came from that profile? Well, we can check, that's another attribute. So we can say, if the device enrollment profile name is that profile equal to this value, default M364 core profile, and we can check that. Same 12 devices. So either way, I'm getting the same thing that I would have gotten with the dynamic device group, but through a filter. Now, the nice thing about filters is you can, you can take things a step further, right? So that's their enrollment profile, but I can add additional expressions. So I can say, well, and I also want to only target, you know, uh, devices that have, uh, that are Microsoft Surface, or let's say now, let's say Lenovo devices. So if they're the Lenovo manufacturer, I only want them. I should only have one of these. Now I don't, but why is that? Because it probably has a different name. So let's just do the manufacturer one and check that. Ah, so you see that has a different prefix, but if I just want to grab my Lenovo devices, for all example, maybe a driver or some kind of BIOS patch, I could do that, right? So. Now, if for some reason I was looking for both and I would say, well, in this case, it's device name starts with Z0T. Okay, I'm not going to get anything because my filters are being very meticulous. Let me remove the OEM there. Okay, and these are all Microsoft Corporation ones. Okay, but let's look at maybe I just want to target Surface devices, but in that realm. So I can go model. And I can say, let's say starts with Surface, because I don't know if I have a Surface Laptop or Surface Pro or whatever, but there you go. Look, I have three. I have Surface Laptop 6, Surface Laptop 4, Surface Laptop Studio. And if I want to be more granular, I would say equals Surface Laptop 4. And it's giving you that real-time previews. And you can even see this is much faster. So let's talk about what you can do with these filters now that you have them. So if I'm gonna deploy anything, let's talk about a policy. So let's say I wanna deploy this BitLocker policy to all my devices. If I go ahead and look at the assignments, right now it's targeting this group. Um, and you can filter with inside a group, but that kind of defeats the purpose in my opinion. So I'm gonna remove this. I'm gonna add all devices, right? Which seems kind of scary, but I'm gonna edit the filter. And I'm gonna say, include a filter, include filter devices in assignment. So this is gonna show me all my filters. And this is where I can choose um, any of the ones I made. So this is my autopilot one, what I showed you before. You see the profile matches the court profile, right? Now, the other thing you can do with filters is you can exclude them. So if for some reason you have a small percentage of the devices that, you know, you don't want to include. So for example, if I have some devices that can't be encrypted because their TPM attestation is false, I can use my TPM attested you know, group here and exclude that from the overall BitLocker policy so I don't end up with errors. All right, so now we have it set to autopilot devices and we're just gonna save that. There's a lot you can do with device filters and, you know, looking at this very briefly, you might say, well, this is doing the same thing as groups. Do I do groups? Do I, do I work with filters? You know, which one is it? But honestly, the way the backend works, you're gonna have a much uh, faster assignment time getting those policies and apps to devices by using the filters because you're skipping this entire translation layer where Intune has to then go talk to Entra and figure out those groups. And uh, it'll make a big difference. I recommend setting up some kind of test with it 
and seeing for yourself, especially if you're finding you're having like long assignment times for things. Um, it's a really good feature. And I'm sure you got to, you know, I just showed you a very basic use case, but a ton of ideas. Uh, I'm sure you're going to have to do this. So let me know what some of those are. I'm always interested in hearing what folks are doing and we'll be seeing you.